Hello everyone. Welcome to One Academy. Let's crack NEET PG. I'm Dr. Shilpa Dinesh. I'm a practicing pediatric consultant in Bangalore. I have done my, um, I have my, I have an experience of teaching undergraduate and postgraduate medical students. I have done my MBBS and MD from Rajiv Gandhi University of Health Sciences. So today we'll be talking about another basic talk, uh, pediatric topic that is nutrition. So this is very important in pediatrics and uh, missing any questions from this topic is a complete no-no. So today we'll be discussing in detail uh, about nutrition and uh, its basics. Okay. So about malnutrition and the, I mean the disorders related to uh, inadequate nutrition that is malnutrition, severe acute mal malnutrition. Uh, kwasha or core marasmus and all that i'll be discussing tomorrow okay so today, today it's just going to be a introduction to nutrition so before that i would want to talk a little bit about an academy an academy is india's largest online learning platform here uh, you get access and there's a lot of benefits you can avail uh, there is you can and get access to daily live classes you can engage with your educator ask your doubts in the live chat box and your answers will be uh, given immediately okay and you can attend these classes every day and you can plan your uh, entire day's uh, study pattern based on these classes so it will be of great help and uh, to prepare for any entrance exam you need to have a structured course you need to plan for, for this uh, this need pg preparation is going to be a year-long preparation and you, and you need to plan it very well okay so by the end of six seven months you should be completely done with your course i mean studying uh, studying once and then you should be revising the next two three months you should be only revising okay so here in an academy all the courses are structured in line with your exam syllabus and it will help you uh, really uh, very much for your preparation also thirdly uh, when you're preparing uh, for your entrance exams you need to know what are your uh, you need to evaluate yourself you need to know what is your strong area what is your weak area that can be only done if you attend live tests quizzes mock tests okay revising so here in an academy you can evaluate yourself with regular live tests quizzes mock tests and this will be uh, this will help you very well to evaluate yourself Fourthly, uh, unlimited access. So if you subscribe to the subscription of an academy, you get unlimited access. So even if you have missed a live class, you can get back and watch the recorded classes as many times as you want. So all this at the comfort of your home, the comfort of your own device. So I would highly recommend this platform for your uh, entrance preparation. So use this from the beginning of a preparation so it will help you a long way and then at the end of the session. So these are our top educators. They have uh, your classes every day on this platform. And all the courses, all the subjects uh, are taught in this uh, platform, which is needed for your NEET PG preparation. Also, these are the ongoing courses in our platform right now. right now and coming to the need pg subscription okay so there is a the, this is a need pg subscription package so it ranges from one month to two year so i would recommend the one year and the two year package so since this need pg preparation is a year long preparation for your entrance exam uh, the one year package would cost you 25000 and if you use my code shilpa 10 you get a 10% discount and it will come up to 22,500. And if you use, uh, if, you think, uh, if you take a, the two year subscription, which is 30,000 and you use my code SHILPA10, you get a uh, discount, 10% uh, discount and it comes up to 27,000. So I would highly recommend this. Uh, and uh, this platform is com uh, very reasonable compared to the other platforms. So I would give you a double thumbs up for this uh, platform. Anyway, coming to today's topic, that is nutrition. So today we'll be talking about nutritional requirements. So today I'll be talking more on macronutrients. Okay. 
and breast milk the benefits and composition this is a very important topic okay any topic related to neonatology community pediatrics is very important and this comes to comes in both community pediatrics as well as neonatology and you shouldn't be missing any question which comes uh, in this topic and thirdly complementary feeding okay so so now <clears throat> what does energy include so energy includes both the intake of energy and expenditure of energy okay so what does an inadequate energy intake do so if there is inadequate energy intake there is growth faltering there is increased catabolism of body tissues okay and there is inability to produce energy substrates okay so what happens when there is excess energy intake so excess energy intake leads to obesity you all i know you all know but we still have to discuss okay what are the components of uh, energy expenditure so energy expenditure is divided into so energy in the body is expended one is with your basal metabolic rate so increased basal metabolic rate metabolic rate increase in, in energy expenditure so decrease basal metabolic rate increase uh, decreased uh, energy expenditure secondly the thermal effect of food the thermal effect of food is the energy spent during the digestion and absorption of absorption of food okay thirdly for physical activity so when you have physical activity even then so energy is expended but in children there is another fourth point that is energy is required for growth and development yes while adults do not have in don't have the growth curve is flat is is in plateau okay so the estimated energy requirement in infants when compared to the body weight is twice when twice of that of the adult okay so this is because they have an increased basal metabolic rate and because of their energy required for weight gain okay so always though in terms of numbers an adult's uh, energy requirement is more compared to infants but when you see the body weight according based on the body weight an infant's energy requirement is more compared to the adult okay so what are the nutrients that provide energy as you all know the nutrients that give us energy is fats carbohydrates and proteins so fats gives a energy of 9 kilocalories per gram and carbohydrates and proteins give an energy of 4 kilocalories per gram okay yeah so now we'll discuss about fats fat is the most calorically dense macronutrient as i said 1 gram of fat gives 9 kilocalories so what are the source so for a newborn breast milk has adequate fats 
up to it can be utilized up to six months so breast milk is enough to give the needed uh, fat resource next in children there are animal broad animal fats vegetable oil so animal fats as i say butter ghee cheese hmm? vegetable oil nuts so these are very rich in fats what are the dietary recommendations so for a child between 1 to 3 years 30 to 40 percent of fats are needed huh? in the total energy intake so in the total energy intake 30 to 40 percent should be fats while a child between 4 to 18 years it's between 25 to 30 percent of fats out of which the saturated fatty acids or saturated fats should be less than 10 percent as you all know this is not good for the health and it predisposes us to more cardiovascular disease uh, atherosclerosis obesity diabetes that is why saturated fatty acids should be less than 10 percent and no trans fats okay yeah next physiological function so uh, they have the fats have a lot of structural and functional um functional roles okay so they are uh, they have this cholesterol moieties okay cholesterol is a precursor for for cell membranes hormones bile acids also fats are needed for the absorption of fat soluble vitamins that is vitamin a d e and k this is very important okay fat soluble vitamins are very essential for us and without fat they are not absorbed into the body okay coming to triglycerides triglycerides are the most common dietary fats okay they are present in yeah in the uh, they are present both in the animal as well as uh, they, there are both animal and vegetable sources now simple sugars get converted into triglycerides and get stored in the liver okay so now increased triglycerides is not good and it can lead to predisposed to cardiovascular disease therefore avoiding sugars okay can reduce the chances of triglyceridemia and improves your cardiac health okay so that is why nowadays sugar uh, people avoid sugar i mean there is a new uh, thing where we try to avoid sugars and that this is one of the reasons okay. dietary saturated fats so dietary saturated fats trans fats all increase ldl low density lipoprotein so these in turn increase the risk of atherosclerosis okay. so atherosclerosis can be can occur as early as in infancy okay as infancy so in some of the autopsy studies this proven so whenever you give a diet advice to a child uh, the cardiac health should be kept in mind as early as two years okay so next coming to polyunsaturated fatty acids
so as you all know polyunsaturated fatty acids are good fats okay but this polyunsaturated fatty acids one second yeah this polyunsaturated fatty acids uh they cannot be um synthesized endogenously by the body and that is why you need to have the uh, have the dietary uh, yeah precursors of pufa to be involved in your diet so what are the precursors of pufa so that is for uh, omega omega 3 and 6 polyunsaturated fatty acids okay these are good fats so the um, precursors are alpha lino lenic acid this for omega 3 polyunsaturated fatty acids and linoleic acid this for omega 6 polyunsaturated fatty acids so now so alpha linoleic linoleic acid gives to icaso pentanoic acid pentanoic acid and doco docosa hexanoic acid five linoleic acid gives araka arachidonic acid this is very important so ara i'll write it as ara dha and ep okay now docosa hexanoic acid and arachidonic acid they structural and functional roles so okay they uh, they uh, modulate the gene expression they help in gene expression and also they are uh, uh, they modulate the inflammatory response Okay. so both docosa hexanoic acid and arachidonic acid are present in the breast milk and they are fortified in the fortified in the formula feeds okay okay next so if there is a deficiency of these essential fatty acids what it will lead to so it leads to desquamation of the skin thrombocytopenia impaired immunity and growth failure so the essential fatty acids are very important but this is not very commonly seen also because it's really you take in your diet also dha is required for neuroregulation neuro regulation and brain development okay. 
so these fatty acids are important in op ocular development also okay so these are the very important uh, things uh, about fats so fats have a lot of uh, benefits next proteins proteins are the also have they have the structural and functional role in every cell of the body so they have been a uh, part as coenzymes precursors for enzymes hormones so they take uh, and they are the building blocks they are responsible for more, a lot of uh, lot of functions in the human body okay so where are the conditions there are a few conditions where you need to reduce a protein intake though it is so uh, much uh, essential for uh, for human beings but there are conditions where you need to reduce or increase so because where you have to reduce is when you have some kind of systemic illness especially the renal renal diseases so in renal diseases you cannot burden the kidneys and there you have to reduce protein okay also there are certain inborn errors of metabolism where the amino acids excess of the uh, any amino acid can worsen your condition so one such thing is maple syrup maple syrup urine disease okay so maple syrup urine disease can, uh, you have to reduce protein intake so i'll be discussing about iems in detail in the next few top chapters classes okay so uh, iems like ms urine so where do you increase protein so when there is a case of burns you have to increase protein intake okay so there are proteins which are the, the amino acids are classified as indispensable dispensable and conditionally dispensable okay so um so dispense indispensable means what indispensable means when you have to um when uh, uh, the body cannot cannot produce cannot produce these amino acids endogenously okay the body cannot synthesize it okay so they are indispensable what is conditionally dispense so this is conditionally indispensable i'm very sorry so conditionally indispensable Yeah. So conditionally indispensable is uh, when certain conditions in the body uh, are, I mean, you have an illness, these uh, amino acids are not produced or you, you might be in a stage like in the new, uh, newborn period where arginine, cysteine and tyrosine are not produced because your your enzyme the enzymes are not mature yet because of the en, en, immaturity of the enzymes so that is why it is called conditionally dispensable but for newborns the breast milk okay the uh, the, the babies feed on the breast milk the breast, breast milk is rich in these uh, amino acids okay and if they are formula fed children these, these amino acids will be fortified. So keep in mind, these are the indispensable amino acids. Histidine, isoleucine, leucine, lysine, methionine, phenylalanine, threonine, tryptophan and valine. So in children who are only on soy based formula, then you have to see that methionine is replaced so here there is 
deficient there will be a deficiency of methionine so methionine needs to be played so coming to carbohydrates so carbohydrates is a major source of energy for all cells okay and the essential source of energy for erythrocytes and the central nervous system okay so low carbohydrate intake leads to ketosis okay higher intake displaces other macro and micro nutrients and lead to deficiency so if you have excess intake of fructose what happens okay there will be increase in hdl and triglyceride okay, there will be increase in uh, hdl and triglyceride production also increase in uric acid this will in turn increase the blood pressure and cause fatty liver disease okay also if you in uh, take a lot of juice can lead to diarrhea yeah this fructose in the form of juice diarrhea abdominal pain and failure to to know this okay so increase in hdl and triglyceride hmm? next glycemic index so basically what is glycemic index glycemic index is the uh, serum glucose after two hours two hours after ingestion of a standard reference what is the standard reference two hours of that is post prandially so that is what he, uh, the standard what is used is slice of bread okay slice of bread okay so always a uh, food with low glycemic index should be taken it will reduce reduce the risk of insulin resistance And cardiovascular disease okay yeah so excess intake of fructose can increase the HDL and triglyceride production and cause cardiovascular disease while increase in uh, uric acid can increase the systolic blood pressure okay and also it is associated with fatty liver disease okay yeah. carbohydrate so uh, now the fiber um, though it's non digestible, so uh, the fate, the metabolic fate of the fiber depends on the colonic bacteria, gut microbacteria, which leads to colonic fermentation of the fiber. Plus, so, uh, it also so the colonic bacteria also sees the uh, uh, type of fiber so it, it fermentation easily happens in case of pectin or bran okay so what are the byproducts of colonic fermentation so there is short chain fatty acids like butyrate propionate okay then oligo rectases okay these are prebiotic which help the gut flora Okay, next is carbon dioxide, methane. Okay, so these short chain fatty acids they 
improve the colon blood, colonic blood flow. colonic blood flow and butyrate especially it is the fuel for the colonocytes okay so uh, these are another thing so as i've told about short chain fatty acids another thing is fibers for satiety hmm? they cause satiety and decrease gastric emptying and regulate the appetite okay. yeah so, so the important role of this thing it reduces the chance of colon cancer improves the cardiac health uh, it prevents inflammatory bowel disease as it um, as it uh, regulates the appetite prevents obesity also helps to control diabetes these are very important that is when a fiber is in, to included in the nutrition part as such there is a no upper limit for fiber they have there has not been or uh, any um, uh, you know disadvantage of having excess of fiber but the thumb off rule for children for children age in years plus five is equal to the grams of fiber per day this can be taken so there is no formula as such but uh, you want to i mean if it is calculated so age in years plus five so if the five year old child 10 gram of fiber would be sufficient per day okay yeah. huh. so now coming to the advantages of breast milk okay so advanced first is the physical benefit so physical benefit is the fluidity and the warmth of the breast milk next as you all know it's economical no one can you know argue about it double tick for it convenient you do not have to uh, carry it in any, in any utensil so it's, uh, breast milk is and if the mother is there, the breast milk is available anytime. And physiological. Okay. So this is sweetest milk. Because of the high lactose content. It's easily digestible. Rich in essential fatty acids. As I've told, glucose uh, DHA that is glucosa hexanoic acid, arachidonic acid. Okay, it is rich in phospholipids, prostaglandin precursors, enzymes. So, what are the enzymes? The present amylase lipoprotein lipase bile salt stimulating lipases oxidases okay what are the growth factors? Growth factors that are there. One is growth regulating factors, 
growth modulators growth promoting factor okay so children who are breastfed okay completely breastfed six months and above the chance of children going into dyslexia or uh, hyperactivity is very less okay so as i've said dha is very high in breast milk and this is dha and ara and these are very important in neuroregulation and brain development okay so biochemically superior okay so biochemically superior that is contains 80 percent whey protein so this whey protein has alpha lactalbumin as lactoferrin okay and the 20 percent remaining 20 percent is casein this lactalbumin This lactalbumin is rich in tryptophan. Okay, and this is the precursor for serotonin. And as you all know, serotonin is a very important neurotransmitter. Now, what does lactoferrin do? Lactoferrin ensures absorption of iron and zinc. And this is a bacteriostatic. So, it's all important. Term. So, Lactalbumin and lactoferrin are very important. So, lactalbumin is rich in tryptophan and it's a precursor for serotonin, which is very important neurotransmitter. As you all know, serotonin is a very important neurotransmitter. And uh, lactoferrin, it helps in the absorption in iron and zinc. So, you know, iron is again very important for brain development and zinc is very important for the uh, maturation of, our in, of the immunity. So, as well as uh, that, uh, lactoferrin has bacteriostatic, bacteriostatic uh, properties. Also, though protein is less, there is non-protein nitrogens. Non-protein nitrogens in breast milk. Which helps in growth and development. Okay. Now, the calcium the calcium is to phosphorus ratio is 2. As a result, calcium absorption is good. Okay. Now, what does lactose also do? Lactose helps in the absorption of, of calcium and magnesium. So these are very important things. Okay. Now, next. Microbiologically sterile. What does that mean? So, as I've told you already, lactoferrin is a bacteriostatic. Or bacteriostatic property. Also, it inhibits E. coli. Okay. So, it binds 
to so you know what happens i have told you lactoferrin binds to iron so e coli needs iron so since lactoferrin binds to iron it inhibits e coli okay it also kills uh, i mean because of the bile uh, bile stimulated bile stimulated um, lipase bile salt stimulated lipase it kills amoeba and giardia okay and paba that is para amino benzo benzoic acid it helps to helps to prevent against malaria okay this much you need to know so microbiologically how is it sterile one is because of lactoferrin lactoferrin being bacteriostatic again helps to uh, prevent infection also it inhibits e coli how does it in inhibit e coli because lactoferrin binds to iron okay iron is necessary for e coli and since e coli doesn't get the iron as it is bind bound to lactoferrin so e coli is uh, inhibited also bile salt stimulating uh, lipase sorry this is lipase lipase kills amoeba and giardia okay and paba that is paramino benzoic acid uh, give uh, helps against malaria okay fine now uh, immunologically so how do you how the Im immunity improves so first it is the breast milk is safe it is non allergenic okay it supplies passive immunity to the baby also it has secretory immunoglobulin a and it uh, that is why it offers protection in the in uh, gi tract and the respiratory tract so now how where is this uh, immunoglobulin a produced immunoglobulin a is produced in the mammary glands by the plasma cells by plasma cells Okay. that are originated from the uh, lymphoid uh, wait is it lymphoid tissue of the gut and the uh, bronchus that is called the gut associated lymphoid tissue and the bronchus associated lymphoid tissue okay so that is how, this is uh, that is why it's very important one is a secretory iga also a uh, breast milk supplies t and B lymphocytes. Okay, so T lymphocytes. So T lymphocytes are responsible for. I'll write it here. So T lymphocytes are responsible for immunological memory. Okay, so as I've told you, there is lactoferrin, there is a non-protein um, nitrogens, then there is uh, hormones, growth, all, all these help in the, uh, to, uh, to improve the immunity. Okay, then another important thing is, this helps in the mother and uh, helps, to, uh, helps to improve the mother and infant bond okay now what are the maternal benefits you can uh, you can uh, get you get from a breast, breast breastfeeding so one thing is yeah so this decreases postpartum bleeding okay and helps in the involution of the uterus Okay, it helps to burn off the fat accumulated during the pregnancy. It also decreases the incidence of, of ovarian cancer. Okay, also 
very important this is very important so uh, uh, the morbidity and the mortality is also decreased so how so children who are breastfed well, exclusively are 14 times less likely to die of diarrhea four times less likely to die because of respiratory infection and 2.5% less likely to die because of other conditions, other infections. Okay, 2.5 miscellaneous. So, so, these are all the very important uh, properties or benefits you can get from, uh, from mother's uh, breast milk. Next. Now, when you compare, compare between the human and the cow's milk, always... For a newborn, human milk is superior. Okay. So, why? So, the protein. Protein in human milk is 1.1 gram, while the cow's milk is high, 3 grams. And the casein is to weigh ratio is 40 is to 60, while casein is, so this is 20. So, casein is very high in cow's milk. Okay, so whey, the whey which is high in human milk has lactalbumin and lactoferrin. And the casein which is present in human milk is beta casein. Okay, and the whey which is present in the cow's milk is lactoglobulin. And this is the main reason why children have intolerance to cow's milk. Okay. The casein which is present in cow's milk is alpha casein. Okay. And the lactose as you all know is high in hu uh, human milk which is 7 gram and 4.5 grams in cow's milk. And vitamin K is less, less than human milk. So that is why to, we need to give vitamin K at birth. So I am, uh, vitamin K is given at birth because uh, since there is deficiency of vitamin K in human milk, there is a chance of hemorrhagic disease of the newborn if the child is not given a, uh, exogenously a vitamin K injection. So vitamin K is less, that is around 15 microgram and in cow's milk it is 60 microgram. And fats, fats, the, uh, the polyunsaturated fatty acids are good fats are in human milk while saturated fatty acids are more in cow's milk and another thing is the energy protein ratio so that is 70 is to 1 and in cow's milk it is 25 is to 1 and the calories for both cow's milk and human milk is 67 for calories for 100 ml okay yeah next another important topic is this baby friendly hospital uh, initiative so baby friendly hospital initiative was introduced in 1992 okay by the unicef and was adopted by india in 1993 okay and this is a very important thing that is the world breastfeeding week that is celebrated uh, on between 1st to the 7th August. So why uh, breastfeeding uh, is so important is because in a country like India, if breastfeeding is not exclusively given, because already there is so much poverty and children dying due to malnutrition will be really high. So breastfeeding is where uh, the week is celebrated in India in um, compulsorily next what are the 10 steps of baby friendly hospital initiative first you should if there should be a written breastfeeding policy in the hospital okay all the healthcare staff should be taught the skills to implement this policy and all the pregnant women should be taught the benefits of breastfeeding and management okay and the mothers you should help the mothers, mothers initiate breastfeeding within one hour of birth. Also, uh, if 
even if the um, baby infant has to stay separate because of some medical condition but mother should be taught how to breastfeed and to maintain lactation okay and no food or drink should be given other than breast milk okay unless medically indicated this is very rare so breast milk is the the best for the newborn always practice rooming in the mother and child should never be separated unless medically indicated but always practice rooming in encourage breastfeeding on demand and no artificial teats or pacifiers always breastfeed okay and foster the establishment of breastfeeding groups to the mother these are the 10 steps in a baby friendly hospital initiative next complementary feeding okay so this should be started after completion of six months of exclusive breastfeeding so why at six months so the intestinal um, uh, myelase matures and the gut is ready to accept cereals and legumes at six months so that is the ideal time for you to uh, wean the child of complementary feeding so along with this breast breastfeeding should be continued okay at least up to two years okay so diluted weaning food can lead to malnutrition and if you go for late weaning because the breast milk can have the right amount of calories up to six months but after six months the demand for iron zinc and other nutrients increase so you have to give uh, extra food that is why uh, late weaning can cause growth faltering and malnutrition this should be kept in mind okay so for today this is it but i would want to discuss a few things which i feel is very important so energy i think you will know yeah so basically in fact what i had told yeah so um for polyunsaturated fatty acids the polyunsaturated fatty acids cannot be endogenously synthesized by the body and the precursors are alpha sorry alpha lino lenic acid and lino lake acid okay so these are the precursors so um these lead so Alpha linoleic acid gives icosopentanoic acid and docosohexanoic acid, while linoleic acid gives arachidonic acid. Okay, so these help in the these help in the neuro development and ocular development. So they are present in the they are needed in the retina. Okay, so this is what. Next, the proteins, uh, I think you all know, these are the uh, indispensable amino acids. That means that are not synthesized by the body and are needed in the diet. Okay, and conditionally indispensable is when you have certain illnesses or you are in this uh, newborn period where these amino acids are not formed by the body and has to be again given by the diet okay so if there is a child who is on soy based formula methionine has to be included okay so i think uh, carbohydrates is fine so can carbohydrates uh, excess intake of fructose leads to sorry increase in ldl triglyceride production and increase in uric acid so this in, in turn leads to increase in blood pressure and fatty liver disease okay and if uh, Fructose, excess of fructose is given in the form of juice that can lead to diarrhea, abdominal pain, and failure to thrive. Okay. Okay. For glycemic index, there is a, see, a glycemic index is nothing but when the serum glucose is measured two hours after ingestion of a uh, ingestion or the standard reference ingestion of food. So, the standard reference what was taken is a slice of bread. Slice of bread okay so if uh, always uh, we should include food which has a low glycemic index as it reduces the risk of insulin resistance and cardiovascular disease okay fiber 
so fiber is a non digestible uh, carbohydrates and um, uh, I, as i said so the uh, carb the metabolic fate of the fiber depends on the type of fiber and the colonic bacteria so that leads to the colonic fermentation of the fiber so what are the byproducts of colonic fermentation of the fi of fiber so that can be carbon dioxide I mean carbon dioxide methane okay oligofractases these are prebiotics which help the gut flora and short chain fatty acids so short chain fatty acids are like butyrate propionate okay this short chain fatty acids they improve the colonic blood flow and the butyrate especially is a fuel of the colonocyte okay now the uh, fiber also uh, reduces gastric emptying and improves the satiety okay and as a result it regulates the appetite so fiber the important role of fiber is it reduces colon cancer it improves uh, uh, cardiac health it prevents inflammatory bowel disease it uh, reduces obesity and it reduces diabetes okay so another thing is there is no upper limit for uh, fiber intake but in children as a thumb of uh, rule uh, thumb of law okay the children uh, the formula is Uh, age in years plus 5 is equal to grams grams of fiber per day okay yeah so i think uh, advantages of breast milk i think i've covered most of it yeah i feel this is very important the presence of lactoferrin so another thing yeah vitamin yeah the whey 80% of whey is very important that has alpha lactalbumin and lactoferrin okay that is very important yeah here when i say microbiologically sterile it is the lactoferrin which is bacteriostatic okay and it inhibits e coli how does it inhibit e coli as it binds to lactoferrin binds to uh, iron so as I, iron is unavailable for the e coli it uh, inhibits the e coli okay now these bile salt stimulating lipases kills amoeba and giardia what about uh, paraminobenzoic acid it prevents uh, help prevents against malaria okay malaria So the immunity, the most important thing is secretory IgA, immunoglobulin A. It uh, it is present in the GI tract and the respiratory tract. So any GI related infections or uh, diseases or respiratory tract related infections are very less in children who are breastfed. Okay. And what are the maternal benefits? It decreases postpartum bleeding. It involutes the uterus by the virtue of oxytocin. It burns of fat which was gained during pregnancy decreases the incidence of ovarian cancer okay okay another thing is children who are uh, exclusively breastfed they are 14 times uh, uh, 14 times less likely to have diarrhea when compared to a non-breastfed child and four times less likely to have a respiratory disease and two and a half times less likely to have any other infection when compared to a non-breastfed child. Okay. Here, what is more important is yes, the whey in uh, cow's milk contains lactalbumin. That is the reason there is intolerance to cow's milk in newborn. Okay. And there is poly uh, polyunsaturated fatty acids in human milk and saturated fatty acids in cow's milk proteins are very high in cow's milk that is up to 3 grams per 100 ml okay and lactose is rich in human milk so lactose does what lactose helps in the absorption of calcium and magnesium also okay yeah so this is for today uh, tomorrow i'll be discussing about malnutrition so i'll be including severe acute malnutrition quashork or marasmus the spectrum 
okay let's okay i just uh, i just hope you have you have understood enough in this class today so this was very basic because i i do not want you all to uh, skip i mean lose a question in such basic topics you all need to know so it is though i took one hour uh, i feel you would have i mean just going through the video would help a lot okay and before i sign off this is my code shilpa 10 and please subscribe to the subscription uh, and get a 10% discount see you good luck and be motivated and study daily that is very important